Hi, this is Don McAllister, and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online for Mac. This week, I'll continue my look at some of the new features in the brand new operating system for the Mac, that's El Capitan. To start with, let's revisit Photos 1.1 now that the new iPhone 6S and 6S Plus are out and see how Photos handles live photos. Now I've received my iPhone 6S Plus, I've been taking lots of live photos and using iCloud Photo Library, uh, those photos are now synchronized with this particular Mac. So if I go across to Photos, uh, these are some ones that you might recognize from previously, but if I scroll down to more recent ones, here we go. These are some live photos. This is actually Jesse. So the nice thing with live photos, and live photos basically are a high-res JPEG photo plus a lower-res MOV file, a movie file, which includes audio, sort of combined together. They are, in fact, separate, but uh, when you play a live photo, uh, you'll see the high-res image and you'll also see the movie as well. And this is manifested in photos. If I just make these bigger, actually, I get a better impression. Uh, these are our live photos. And as I mouse across each one, you'll see we get the movie file in the background as well. Okay, so the cat's scratching at the post and uh, also here as well. But just as I mouse across each particular photo, we get the dot .movie file playing seamlessly in the background. Uh, we already covered last week that uh, we have a video. This is a video down here. That's just a standard video preview, but these are new live photos. Now, you can switch the live photo element on or off uh, on an individual basis. If I select a photo, if I control or right click, and then say turn off live photo, and that now becomes a static image, and we don't see the live component. But this one here, as I mouse over, we still get the live movie file. Now, as you might imagine, this can also be switched back on again. Uh, you can also go up to image, and there's an option, here we go, turn off or turn on live photo. Now that menu command doesn't disable the live photo element completely, it just stops the mouse over uh, replay of the live photo. But I will show you something that will actually stop it completely. If we go into uh, well, full screen mode for this particular image, you'll notice down at the bottom, again, we've got this live button. If I just mouse over that, it will replay it, including the audio. Um, but if I now try and edit this photo, if I say edit, and let's say I want to crop it to a square, if I go to crop, you'll see editing will turn off live photo. So the edits will only apply to the high-res JPEG uh, that's contained within the live photo. So if we say OK to that, uh, let's go to square, let's go to aspect and go to square, and uh, let's Go in a bit further. Okay, that should do it. We'll say done. Okay, so now the live button has disappeared. And if I actually go back out a level, you'll see if I mouse over this, no movie. We can restore it if I go back into edit mode again. And if I say revert to original and done, you'll see we have the live button back. Okay, so I haven't destroyed the live component. Now one workaround to this, if you do like the live photos and you want to keep them, but you still want to edit this particular photo, what you can do is if we just come back out of here, uh, what I would suggest is just control or right click, say duplicate one photo. So now we have uh, the original and version two. And then in version two, if we just go in, that is also a live photo, but we can actually go in, edit this one. Uh, again, we'll crop this. Let's just crop this manually for now. And uh, let's enhance as well. And we'll say done. Right, so now we have the original live photo, still with the movie element, which is this one here. And we also have a still from that live photo. Now, at the time of recording, there aren't any apps available at the moment that will allow you to take a live photo and convert it to a GIF file or a GIF file, but I'm sure that will come. It's only been a week or two since they actually came out. So that's live photos. Another huge element of Photos 1.1 with El Capitan is the ability now to use third party photo extensions to edit your photos actually within Photos itself. So uh, let me show you a couple of examples. And at the end of this section, I'll actually give you a link to pre-order a whole bundle 
of photo extensions that are due out in the next uh, couple of weeks. So uh, I'll show you some that exist already. There's still only a handful, but there are some great new ones coming out in a couple of weeks, which you might be interested in. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at photo extensions. Now, photo extensions are really sort of plugins. Uh, we used to have plugins with Aperture, you used to have plugins with Lightroom, but Photos now with its new architecture uh, supports these things called extensions. Uh, there are a couple available. If we go across to the App Store, and you'll see that, uh, well, at the time of recording, Apple are pushing the photo extensions. They've got a separate panel here, Apps for Photographers, and here we have four extensions available for the Photos app. There are actually three of them are by the same company, uh, MacFun. We have Tonality, Snapheel, and Noiseless. I've already purchased Snapheel and Noiseless, so I've downloaded and installed these. There are actually some brand new extensions coming out from MacFun that will replace these. Uh, the problem with these, well, especially with the Noiseless one, is that they don't support raw photos. They only support JPEGs. But there is Noiseless Pro, um, but there's no extension for that as yet. But as I say, check out the link at the end of this section and I'll show you how you can actually pre-order the pro versions of all these extensions from MacFun uh, at a reduced price. So I've already installed Noiseless and Snapheel already. So if I close down the App Store, if I go back into Photos, and what I will show you, let's show you the Noiseless extension. Uh, I've got some photos here which are some nighttime shots. And uh, what Noiseless actually does is it removes noise from the photographs. So if you've taken it in low light, or you've had to use a high ISO, um, sometimes you do get lots of noise in the background of the photograph or the digital image. So for instance, this one here I've favorited. If I actually go in, uh, all looks okay. But if we start zooming in, if I use Control and Plus, and then we'll just look at the sky, you'll see there's a fair amount of noise in the sky. It's not smooth, it's pretty noisy because it was low light and uh, we had to use a high ISO. Now, Noiseless, as the name suggests, will actually help me reduce the amount of noise and virtually eliminate it completely, making the image uh, much cleaner, much nicer to look at. And the way I would invoke Noiseless would be to go into Edit Mode first. So if I just click on Edit, and then within Edit, if we look down at the bottom, you'll see there is a brand new option here for Extensions. If I click on there, uh, they're currently not configured, but a configuration is very straightforward. All I do is click on More, that opens the extension panel, and these are my two available extensions for editing photos, Snap Heal and Noiseless. And we will see more of these over the coming months. I think Pixelmator have got some extensions in the pipeline, but let's just go with Snap Heal and Noiseless for now. If I close that down, go back to extensions and go to Noiseless. Right, so the Noiseless interface will appear, and this is great now because I haven't had to come out of photos uh, previously, I would have had to export the photo, um, import it into Noiseless, process it, uh, re-export it or resave it, and then bring it back into Photos. Whereas now, everything is done within the application. The Noiseless application is loaded from within Photos. So uh, it's a very straightforward app, actually. There's not really that much to show you. And I think we will do a future episode on all the extensions or some of the top extensions to demonstrate how to use them properly. But for now, if I just scroll to the top of the screen, you'll notice that uh, the main display has this yellow divider. And basically, it's the uh, before and after uh, view of the photo. It's currently zoomed up to 200%. But if I just scroll up to the top, now you'll see that the uh, there's a line going across. It's actually processing the image. I don't know how easy it is to see on the screencast, but on the left-hand side, there's lots of noise. On the right-hand side, that noise has been pretty much eliminated. Now you can use these panels if you want to add a moderate amount of noise reduction you can do, or an intense amount of noise reduction. And then you can scroll and have a look. As I move the image, you'll see it needs to reprocess the before and after. But if I just move it, you can see a fairly dotty sky on the left and a nice smooth sky on the right. But let's go with medium. There's some sliders here as well. I can adjust the slider to fine tune it. Uh, I can actually move as well as the sky. Obviously, it does the entire uh, image. You'll see that boat hull there. It looks pretty speckly. If I just stop, it will reprocess it, and it sort of smoothed it out for me. I probably want to lighten that up a bit as well. But very, very good, very useful for low-light scenarios. And when we're finished, all I need to do is just say Save Changes. And that will edit the photo in place. So uh, when I go back to Photos, the uh, original photo has been edited and uh, it should look a lot nicer. Right, so Noiseless has finished its processing. If I say Done to that, it takes me back to the original image. Let's just do a Command Plus 
again it might be difficult for you to to see now but uh, all that noise in fact I've zoomed in a lot further than I did before and there's much less noise now if I just zoom out a little bit you'll see the sky is nice and smooth okay so that's the noiseless extension let's go back out a level I'll just show you the snap heel one which is an application that allows you to do a repair uh, if I go to let's say this one here let's say I want to take this light out I think it's a light or some sort of a stand if I go to edit if I go to extensions let's use snap heel again it's all done within photos I don't have to come out of the application I can uh, have a look here let's zoom in a bit so if I want to uh, change the diameter of this in fact we'll bring that down I'm just going to paint over the area I want to remove let's say uh, that bit and then we'll say erase Again, lots of different modes, um, different selection tools you can use. We'll look at this in a bit more detail in a couple of weeks once the pro versions are released as extensions. But there you go. That uh, long pole has disappeared very seamlessly. And again, if I save changes uh, and say done, the original photo within the Photos application is updated. And of course, if I'm using iCloud Photo Library, uh, that will now be synchronized with all my uh, devices. Okay, so as far as the extensions are concerned and this uh, deal I'm talking about, now I have got an affiliate link for this. Uh, if I just go across to Safari, let me uh, load up Safari. And within Safari, if you go to screencastonline.com slash MacFun, I'll take you across to the MacFun website. And this is the thing I've picked up on, this Creative Kit 2016. It's not being launched until October the 15th, but you can actually buy it before then you can sort of pre-order it and when you do pre-order it you do get some things first you'll see it's 72 pounds 99 but it's for the entire suite of photo products so tonality intensify focus noiseless and snap heal and a new app as well fx photo studio but these will all be pro versions so they'll support raw files there'll also be extensions for photos as well and if you go along to this page there's some extras that you get straight away and a 30 day money back guarantee but you can actually go through and have a look at the different applications from here and see what it is they do but uh, I've pre-ordered this it looks uh, a great deal but uh, I've ordered the entire suite so that I can use photos and not worry about external photo applications so as I say uh, screencastonline.com slash macfun I uh, get all the information over there now, if you're watching the screencast after the launch day of October the 15th, you've probably missed out on the pre-order. It's over £300, normally £370, but the pre-order price is £72.99. We will have a look at these applications in more detail once they're released, so we'll probably do an episode or two on Screencast Online uh, to cover the in-depth functionality for each application. But anyway, that's all I wanted to go over photos for this week, and uh, I think we'll now take a look at notes. If you've been following the iOS 9 shows, you'll know that I have already covered Notes on iOS 9. And Notes has had a complete rewrite. It's now a cross-platform application for both iOS 9 and El Capitan, but it's been greatly enhanced from the original version of Notes. Uh, they're using a new syncing method. They're actually using iCloud now to sync Notes between both platforms. And they've added some additional support for different data types as well. But uh, rather than go through the application to begin with, I'm going to actually start by how you actually create notes because you can create notes within the notes application itself. But Apple have integrated most of their applications to use notes from the share menu. To get the full version of this tutorial completely for free, as well as immediate access to over 500 other Apple related tutorials, all you need to do is visit seofree.com to register for your 14 day no obligation free trial screencasts online membership. So that's seofree.com to register for your 14 day free trial membership. <laughs> 